Welcome to Taiwan Talks, bringing you a Taiwan perspective on global affairs. I'm Albert Cho. Taiwan's democratic government and its people face the constant threat of China's military, the PLA, in preparing for a potential attack. War games have assessed the PLA's ability to invade Taiwan. Joining us are Leonard Zhao, former Taiwan ambassador to Eswatini, and Lai Yizhong, president of the Prospect Foundation, and Charles Wu Chonghan, National Zhengzi University professor. A very warm welcome to all on the show. Three recent <coughs> simulations from the Center of Strategic and International Studies, so-called CSIS, in January show that Taiwan could deter China's invasion. The Sasakawa Peace Foundation uh, show how coordinated efforts between United States, Japan, and Taiwan could also deter uh, China's aggression, uh, but with a very heavy casualties. The ever War Games by a U.S. House Committee show that PLA winning despite losing 40,000 soldiers. So I guess my first question goes to President Lai. So to what extent, in your perspective, you think that the War Games can provide guidance for Taiwan's military preparation? Usually, when people look at war game, they, we do not look at it as their fortune telling, mm -hmm. as they will predict accurately about what will happen should the uh, uh, the invasion uh, really occur. The issue about the war game and the exercise is about to test uh, some of our current capabilities under certain conditions, and also try to test a certain hypothesis. Mm -hmm. uh, should uh, our response in this way, uh, how would that uh, uh, might happen? Mm -hmm. So the war game is basically. Uh, especially uh, uh, very important in terms of how we assess our capability and uh, the uh, assess the current system response. Mm -hmm. uh, rather than uh, uh, testing about the, uh, uh, what the out real outcome could be. Mm -hmm. Because what we are going to do is to through the, all the results of the war game in order to find a way uh, to improve or to remedy okay. some of the problem that uh, we might have. So basically, uh, if we talk about the war game winning or losing, uh, we can win as long as we put the, uh, uh, the parameter for Taiwan's capability as uh, 10,000 mm -hmm. and put the other side as zero. Mm -hmm. Then we'll win every time. Right, yeah. uh, so the issue is basically about what you really wanted to get out of this war game and uh, what kind of systematic uh, issue you like to address uh, through this war game. So, like to what extent, you <coughs> think that you know, so to speak, the constant because you know there's a variables you know from situation to situation that makes the uh, the result of the work game probably unpredictable a little bit. So, do you think that constant, the so-called constant, the, you know, the conditions out there, it's very easy to control for the constants over there? Uh, the con usually that really depends on how you design the war game. Mm -hmm. So the uh, the constant in the war game scenario one probably will be the uh, variable mm -hmm. in the war game scenario number two. Mm -hmm. And also the uh, if you look at the Japan and the United States uh, war game, mm -hmm. sometimes the U.S. war game would like to test that. So for example, the Japan in is uh, will not evolve. Mm -hmm. uh, how would the uh, how would that uh, come out? In order to know that uh, whether a base or the Japan's military involvement will be a decisive factor mm -hmm. to defeat the other side should uh, the, those invasion happens. And for the Japan side, sometimes they would like to see that uh, what kind of weaponry, what kind of military uh, asset that the United States would like to employ, mm -hmm. and how would that affect not just about Taiwan's, but also of, uh, the Japan's uh, due to its proximity toward Taiwan uh, and the Japan's uh, national interests. How would that be affected? So that depends on uh, where you want to test. Okay. All right, uh, Professor Wu. Um, so. Are there any precedents in other countries that have relied on war game to prepare for external attacks uh, in your uh, memory? Yeah, the war game usually, like what we say, we use to uh, exam or test a kind of uh, most likely events. Mm -hmm. However, sometimes, uh, like United States, sometimes they use the war game to uh, exam some the fictional scenarios, for mm -hmm. example, uh, some weapon systems, how they can apply the weapon system to the battlefield. Uh, but the most likely uh, the war game we know now is how can we kind of examine or test based on certain scenarios how the war will be expand, how the war will go in on certain battlefield, mm -hmm. and uh, especially if there's a war occurs between China, United States, and Taiwan. Mm -hmm. And now uh, people talk about some valuable precedents uh, in the war game. For example, the Ukraine and Russian war. Right now, mm -hmm. the United States also applies some war game scenarios mm -hmm. on that. In March 2023, uh, U.S. Chairman Joint Chief Staff Mark Milley 
Uh, he visited some uh, military bases in Germany, and he looked at some war game scenarios. And based on some assumptions and also scenarios, they wanted to see how the war game would go, last, mm -hmm. how long they would last. And the result uh, shows kind of more positive right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, probably show Ukraine will probably win the war in the future. Mm -hmm. But like I say, uh, I agree with uh, President Lai. Uh, war game is, we are not like a fortune teller. Mm -hmm. We cannot pre use the war game to predict <coughs> but only thing is we can use the war game as based on the scenarios, how can we prevent mm -hmm. some kind of uh, unpredictable mm -hmm. uh, results mm -hmm. occurred. Okay, all right, and based on the, um, the war games conducted by CSI suggest that Taiwan could withstand a potential Chinese invasion. However, war games um, conducted by the House Select Committee on the Chinese Communist Party indicated that uh, despite an anticipated loss of 40,000 Chinese troops such as uh, such an invasion could still succeed. Uh, you know, this you know, looks <laughs> a little bit hopeless for Taiwan. So how do you interpret this mixed results? Well, as a matter of fact, for our audience, you know, general reference that the, <coughs> the terms mm -hmm. war games mm -hmm. is rather a dramatical, you know, description mm -hmm. of otherwise a very uh, regular and traditional the military simulation, mm -hmm. or we might say that CPX, mm -hmm. command post, you know, exercise or you know TTX. Okay. You know, tap tap tap. It's a regular. You know, it's a very very ordinary uh, military simulation. But the war game term, you know, stems from the year 1966. Oh, okay. The first, you know, it first appeared mm -hmm. in the uh, BBC. Okay. You know, documentary mm -hmm. film. You know, pseudo documentary film about the the nuclear war. You know, crisis. Okay. What the kind of uh, you know the the what can the nuclear war you know it bring to the world and uh, its aftermath. But because of the controversy, mm. because the film itself is kind of terrifying for the general audience, so uh, it was finally withdrawn from the original, okay, provisional screening date. So it, it didn't show up. Mm. So I think uh, still, uh, uh, the two uh, gentlemen uh, say earlier that there's still some distance between the difference between the so-called war games. But I think it's very misleading. Mm -hmm. Looks like it's going to be war. It's going to be a game. Well, it's, uh, I personally don't like this kind of term, you know, it's very, very uh, too, too strong, too mm -hmm. sharp. So it's some distance between, uh, you know, the, uh, the simulation and, uh, and what will happen, you know, in reality. So I think uh, talking about the CSIs and the and, uh, House Select Committee, as we all know that CSIs itself is a rather uh, little, okay, Republican, conservative mm -hmm. think tank. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I was in Washington, I deal with CSIs, you know, a lot. And, uh, and so it's, uh, you, might, you might say that it's rather uh, uh, following the uh, Republican, you know, uh, party uh, ideology mm -hmm. about so in their you know war game, so-called war game, the uh, Taiwan will win, mm -hmm. okay, at a very uh, large cost, mm -hmm. and then but but uh, the House Select Committee is rather bipartisan. Mm -hmm. It cover mm -hmm. covers all the congressmen okay. of the both parties, so it's a rather little you know in, you know in near the, the neutral. So I think uh, so a difference, uh, definitely they they're going to bound to be some different between the different kind of uh, think tanks or different kind of institutions which holds the, you know, the war games like this. I think your insights is very <coughs> intriguing because uh, basically you think that the results of all war games, sometimes Taiwan lose, some, sometimes Taiwan yeah. won, <coughs> uh, simply because of this uh, background support <coughs> from if, is a partisan consideration over there? I, you think, you know, I, yeah. I would not rule out the possibility of uh -huh. the uh, partisan, you know, a bias or partisan, mm. uh, a partisan, you know, partisan, you know, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, you know, orientation. Mm -hmm. But still, uh, the, dis the difference between the two war games, there's a uh, three months, three months apart. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I think, uh, it, it, you know, it, bound, it, it, it brings some difference. Mm -hmm. When it happened, you know, like uh, the war game in January mm -hmm. and, uh, the, the, and war game in April. A three months difference that will tell some difference between a lot of variables mm -hmm. and per parameters, mm -hmm. and also you know uh, n n n you know not alone that mm -hmm. let alone that the uh, the Chinese visit mm -hmm. in early uh, part of the April right. that would bring some uh, you know different mm -hmm. uh, var variables mm -hmm. to the war games in the, in the House Select Committee. Okay, yeah. thanks, um, President Light. So <coughs> let's talk about the PLA's reaction to war games like this. Do you think that PLA is likely to think twice with the result, especially when they know that they are probably will lose, even make a, uh, uh, like a hash attack on Taiwan, they probably will lose. Do you think that you know, the war game itself has some kind of implication or kind of as a warning to the PLA? Um, I think PLA will have its own war gaming uh, mm -hmm. regarding the invasion scenarios mm -hmm. about under what condition mm -hmm. uh, probably they can prevail mm -hmm. and uh, if they fail, uh, what will be the remedial uh, measure uh, mm -hmm. for them. 
But I believe that uh, when we talk about the war game, because uh, various uh, institutions have their own war games, mm -hmm. uh, the U.S. and Japan, uh, and the U.S. in various sectors. Uh, when we talk about the CSIS uh, war game, uh, basically I think people refer to the, uh, the, like the 24 scenarios that CSIS conducted last year mm -hmm. and they publicized earlier this year. Mm -hmm. And uh, in those 24, probably only one, the so-called doomsday scenario, uh, mm -hmm. in which the United States would never send any single troops uh, uh, to help Taiwan. The Taiwan will lose, uh, but uh, Taiwan will be able to withstand uh, for about over 70 days mm -hmm. uh, before we surrender to okay. the PLA. Uh, and the, uh, uh, the interesting thing about the, uh, the Congressional Committee, their war game, we have to look at the lens. It's just about two hours. Mm. Uh, usually the war game in the scenario, usually we run for Take several like days. Uh, n not exactly several days, mm -hmm. but uh, at least uh, some simple scenario, we run at least a morning, okay. the, ho the whole morning. Uh, and uh, the house, uh, the, uh, the war game also uh, has this uh, issue about that's very simplified. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's based on the, uh, uh, the uh, CEN CNS, uh, Center for New American Security, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, simulations uh, they run last July. Mm -hmm. And based on that, make a simple <coughs> version and uh, uh, as orchestrated and uh, designed by the, uh, uh <coughs> the St uh, Stacey Petty Jones, I think, the, uh, who I believe that the professor who also uh, knows, that uh, it will be basically give the uh, congressional member a taste, a taste not just about who win or who lose, but what exactly the United States capability needs to do mm. uh, or needs to prepare and uh, promote in order to remedy some of the current effects mm -hmm. uh, should those th scenarios happen. Mm -hmm. So it has a very particularly uh, the what would this do, uh, what will this require the congressional uh, role uh, in a, uh, uh, for the pos potential the Chinese invasion scenarios. Mm -hmm. What should they do? Mm -hmm. So it's basically designed toward that. Right. Uh, and very different from the uh, traditional war game where uh, the military, the think tankers, they, uh, either they threw the computer uh, simulation or the seminar discussion mm -hmm. uh, war game, uh, the development is very different. So okay. I think it is important to notice those uh, differences. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Professor Wu. So do you think that the United States and also its allies use the World Games as a so-called publicity stunt to deter China's ambition in invading Taiwan? Yeah, I think this so was their calculation. Yeah. This basic function, one of very important functions is the deterrence effects mm -hmm. from the war game. Mm -hmm. And how to prevent the war, one of the uh, very important factors is deterrence. Mm -hmm. For example, we study how, why war occur. Uh, mm -hmm. James Fearon has a very important art article mm -hmm. because it means inf information problem, means mm -hmm. communication problem, and means commitment problems. Mm -hmm. And I think commitment is a very important thing to prevent war if the Western society cannot show a consistent and strong con uh, deterrence to the you know, potential attacks. Mm -hmm. However, I, wa I want to say one thing is not only Western society do the war game. Mm -hmm. I think Chinese, their think tank also, or the school, yeah. academia, will do the war game. However, I'm worried about that if, like, uh, we, 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 like what we study, Xi Jinping controlled the power, all the power is con uh, controlled by himself. He's mm -hmm. a strong man, which we call the echo chamber. Mm -hmm. And all the war right. games scenario probably will be very, very simplified, mm -hmm. which will show they probably will win, and mm -hmm. people will probably have more advantage when mm -hmm. they initiate the attacks. Right. But so when it's happens, we will see totally two different war game scenarios. Mm -hmm. One is done by uh, Chinese academia, and one is done by the United States or right. the allies academia. So how can we prevent this kind of, you know, mm -hmm. very bizarre scenario happen? I think China need to uh, you know, study more about what's going on in the war, mm -hmm. especially the war game provided by uh, CSIS and otherwise, and also combined with their uh, mm -hmm. studies. Right, okay, um, Ambassador Zhao, so yeah. <coughs> looking at the war game of the U.S. House Committee, uh, you know, that one was a little bit not so good for Taiwan, but what can Taiwan do to fend off an invasion if U.S. allies choose not to intervene, even if at the same time PLA troops successful lands in Taiwan? Well, this issue has been uh, <coughs> frequently talked about and mm -hmm. discussed mm -hmm. over the past uh, uh, more than half a year. I think the more and more, you know, Taiwanese they come to uh, uh, you know, suspect, mm -hmm. okay, uh, the uh, doubt that what if uh, the U.S., although, you know, repeatedly pledged to help Taiwan, mm -hmm. okay, in case of any uh, Chinese av invasion, mm -hmm. but more and more uh, are, you know, uh, the uh, doubtful that the U.S. will really, okay, 
uh, going to some concrete action in helping Taiwan come to the Taiwan's aid. So this is not a, not a new one, but I would like to say that the, the, this uh, uh, fundamentally, mm -hmm. okay, primarily speaking, that the, uh, the relation between the, between the U.S. and Taiwan and China, okay, is, uh, is a very com complex one. But still, I would like to say that uh, although as a, you know, a you know, security guarantor mm. of Taiwan, uh, the, as U.S. it is, or mm. it's considered mm -hmm. to be like that, but still, I think that the, you know the, the cross strait relations is always a, a tough nut mm. for Taiwanese to crack. Mm. Even now, it's for 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 uh, you know for uh, for, uh, for the United States to uh, to uh, to absorb to to uh, have uh, you know uh, have involvement in that. But I think that as my friend Richard Bush, mm. the one of the former mm -hmm. AIT directors, my my longtime friend, he said that it's rather uh, uh, he hopes that there's going to be a coercion mm. without violence. Mm coercion mm. without violence you know between the two sides of the Taiwan Strait I would like to uh, you know uh, sincerely uh, uh, call for the, the for main China to to consider it, take into serious account that the, you like to get tough with Taiwan but not mm. through military military means you know okay so I think from from the US perspective also I would like to equally sincere sincerely uh, suggest the United States that to help Taiwan to help Taiwan of course improve you know, her military capabilities is what they are trying to do now. Mm -hmm. But still, you ha also have to find ways to, to, uh, to boost mm -hmm. Taiwanese self-confidence, mm -hmm. okay, in securing our own land, our own soil. Mm -hmm. Also, to consolidate the, our sense of se security. Okay, so in, in this regard, and not only by the means of military, uh, military aid or any armed cells, or you know the troops, you know landing in Taiwan whatsoever. It's still in the long term, you have to uh, uh, you have to take into serious account that the you Taiwan, you know, U.S. Taiwan bilateral relations have to involve. It could have involved uh, the things beyond the military sector, okay. such as you know the uh, the uh, you know the uh, the BTA, mm -hmm. you know bilateral mm -hmm. trade agreement mm -hmm. and TIFA. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's uh, for the trade. But mm -hmm. so far, I would like to uh, uh, allow me to be straightforward. Mm -hmm. Not much progress has been seen, mm -hmm. although they keep saying, you know, mm -hmm. my, my friend John Deng, he's been working on that mm -hmm. for a long time. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I haven't seen any concrete mm -hmm. result. And also, like, uh, for example, not too long ago, last year, the IPEF, mm -hmm. Indo-Pacific Economic Framework, mm -hmm. I think Taiwan <laughs> is overqualified mm -hmm. to join that. All right. But as a result, mm -hmm. we were not invited. Mm -hmm. But that was a very ironical. I would like to say, as a long time, you know, American, you know, uh, you know, the U.S. affairs, you know, uh, Taiwan's official that the uh, the IPF without Taiwan doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. So I say it's a it's a controversial, it's a it's a contrary and also ironical to the U.S. Mm -hmm. you know commitment for helping Taiwan in this regard. Through the World Game Simulation, you know, we are considering the impact on the U.S. and its allies, uh, both economically and also diplomatically. So, so like in your evaluation, do you think that they are likely to see the, the result war game is going to be a victory for Taiwan or a, a failure for Taiwan and that's going to, you know, change their attitudes or even action plan for Taiwan? I think the, uh, for the planners, uh, mm. for uh, the U.S. allies uh, and also Taiwan's friends such as Japan, mm. Philippines, Korea, mm -hmm. uh, what they look at war game, uh, will look into the details about mm. what, uh, on what parameters and on what uh, preconditions mm -hmm. uh, and the result. And also what the, uh, those war game would like to test. Uh, according to a certain uh, uh, hypothesis. Mm -hmm. uh, so, for example, in Japan, uh, the United States would tend to look at uh, should the U.S. involve but without uh, using any base in Japan, and Japan is completely out of the, uh, uh, the scenarios, uh, how would the, the U.S. will respond? Mm -hmm. And I think Japan also will look at this. Mm -hmm. uh, should the Japan is not involved, mm -hmm. uh, as uh, some of the Japanese uh, politicians would like to argue that the Japan should not get itself involved into the uh, U.S.-China conflict over Taiwan, mm -hmm. then the uh, uh, but uh, the uh, the impact to Japan, what would that be? Mm -hmm. If uh, still there's a very considerable uh, the uh, strategic and uh, security risk uh, toward Japan uh, uh, in this conflict, and then the, it doesn't matter whether Japan lend its base to the United States or not, then probably it will prepare the, uh, Japan to consider more that we should prepare, mm -hmm. uh, have our bases, uh, and also the U.S. bases in Japan uh, have a full utilization of it. And of course, uh, Japan seems uh, is m uh, more forthcoming than mm -hmm. other countries. Mm -hmm. 
uh, the next one will probably will be the Philippines mm -hmm. because Philippines is in a very important strategically uh, uh, critical uh, situation uh, uh, locations in which that uh, uh, the northern tip of the Philippine island mm -hmm. sit at uh, over two thirds of the Abashi Canal mm -hmm. and which means that uh, uh, right now the Chinas uh, whether that's airplane or the sh uh, vessels uh, they frequently use the Abashi Canal uh, to in to get get in and out of the first island chain, mm -hmm. and that means that the Philippines uh, will see a lot of Chinese movement. Okay. And should the United States were able to utilize the Philippine basis, uh, then the how that impact on on the Chinese action on Taiwan would be. And if that becomes a, 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 a the the critical factor in changing the whole uh, outcome, I think that will make the Philippines to be more willing. Uh, to uh, be part of this uh, through uh, the uh, easy usage of this space uh, in the simulation. Okay, let's now hear from William Zhong Zidong on Japan's role in the potential conflict in Taiwan Strait and whether Taiwan would think twice considering the economic impact before launching a cross-strait war. He's an assistant research fellow at the Institutes of National Defense and Security Research. Let's take a look. There is a prevailing assumption that the United States and Japan would both be involved in a Taiwan Strait conflict. Is it accurate to state that the effective use of U.S. bases in Japan is imperative for successfully protecting Taiwan, and that although other allies are important, Japan plays the pivotal role? The, you know, the U.S. Uh, military base in Japan will be a reasonable target for PRA to attack because they are the most likely you know, the U.S. armed forces to support Taiwan in case the U.S. want to have a military involvement in the Taiwan Strait. Japan may not, you know, initially to take part the U.S. armed forces intervention in Taiwan Strait, but if Beijing attacked American bases in Japan, I think from Tokyo's perspective, they will think that's a kind of direct attack Japan. As I mentioned, this is the nearest, the you know, the, the U.S. armed forces near the Taiwan Strait. It's, uh, of course, that's a, a big threat to, to China. For example, when they want to break through the first chain island, then, of course, in the, you know, the, <clears throat> in Japan's military base will be a very, very dreadful uh, forces against the PLAs, not only the, you know, the aircraft carrier and uh, all, the all the armed forces as well. It has been indicated that a Taiwan Strait conflict would lead to substantial casualties for all parties involved. The devastation of Taiwan, along with significant losses to China and the United States, could bring profound instability to the global economy. Considering this, would China exercise greater caution in its decision making when it comes to starting a war? Yes, I think the American leaders, ally and partner, they are thinking to increase the cost to Beijing when they think whether they should launch the war, you know, in the Taiwan Strait to change the status quo. So increase the, the cost, not only directly, you know, from the war and after the war, and that's what might Cause the you know Chinese economy, you know the backwards for a couple of decades. For example, sometimes we all think this we we are you know to calculate this is from a rational perspective, but war sometimes happens on is not rational. Yeah, that's why I think uh, we and uh, you know the the Western or the international society is a quite concern where China is really, you know, when disregarded the economic, you know, the loss and will still want to wage the war against the, you know, the status quo in Ta Taiwan Strait. I think if you look back, if we look back, the, you know, what happened now in the Ukraine and the Russians war, you know, when war happened, it's maybe, it's not what the invaders think, what they can get just like you know, Moscow. In the beginning, I don't think the, they, they are not thinking the, the situation will be will like now. But uh, when war happened, it's always 
the development is always unexpected. And of course, I think that is why now American and uh, its ally, and of course, including Taiwan ourselves, we try to increase the military, you know, the war costs, not only the, you know, the in military term, in all, we can say a comprehensive perspective and to let China think again, is that wars to wage in the war to, you know, against Taiwan and, uh, you know, unilaterally and without concern, the international society response. Beyond war games, Washington continues to speak of a year in which China will invade Taiwan. This came from 2021 when top U.S. naval commander and Merrill Philip Davison announced that China would be able to invade Taiwan by 2027. A discussion over whether that's the date that China will have the capability or the intent soon followed. Many in Washington don't believe that China would want to invade Taiwan, even what it can. Let's talk about what this means for us here in Taiwan. So, uh, President Lai, could you elaborate a bit on what the Davidson timeline is about? I think the uh, Phil Davidson's timeline, uh, year 2027, that became uh, well known you know, mm -hmm. to the whole world, mm -hmm. is in year, two uh, year 2021, mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> in the, um, uh, I think, Senate hearing, and uh, Phil Davidson just talked about the, uh, uh, at that time, uh, the war on Taiwan probably will be within six years. Mm -hmm. So that, at that time, that means the year 2027. But then the, uh, pe when people uh, discuss about why the year 2027 is a spe specific timeline, uh, the conclusion at that time was it was more political than uh, military capabilities. Mm -hmm. Political because the uh, year 2027 is the one year anniversary of the PLA establishment, and also the uh, the end of the third, uh, the Xi Jinping third term, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and to the beginning probably his fourth terms, mm -hmm. and uh, those two political uh, calendars uh, congregate together uh, means that uh, probably the uh, the Xi Jinping want to achieve something. Uh, greater mm -hmm. uh, in order to uh, realize his rejuvenation of Chinese dream mm -hmm. and Taiwan uh, will be the critical piece uh, for such a realization. And uh, since the is one of the years on the anniversary of the POA establishment, uh, so the emphasis about how the POA was able to, to do something, mm -hmm. especially POA has a failed attempt to even capture the, the, the Kimoi in 1949. Uh, during the uh, uh, Gu Ningtou, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the battles. So that's, the, uh, uh, that's how the people came to the conclusion mm -hmm. two years ago about mm -hmm. those. Mm -hmm. And then later, the, uh, the people started to calculate about the capabilities of buildings. Uh, and of course, we, they only calculate the way that PLA built itself, uh, the, uh, how the Taiwan and the United States uh, improve our capability. That was not part of the calculation in, in the whole mix. Uh, the, uh, but then I think the, especially this year, uh, what the U.S. national intelligence uh, <coughs> uh, told us is that uh, Xi Jinping ordered the POA to be prepared to have the capability to invade Taiwan before year 2027. Mm -hmm. So basically it means that uh, Xi Jinping believe, uh, does not believe his military has mm -hmm. a capability to invade Taiwan right now. Mm -hmm. And he wants them to be ready uh, mm -hmm. to build out the capability okay. before year 2027. So that's how uh, those uh, timelines yeah. congregate together and it is fixed stated uh, 2027. Okay, uh, Ambassador Zhao, so yeah. do you agree with the year of 2027? <laughs> oh. That's going to be the invasion. Well, absolutely uh, not. Year. Okay. Absolutely not. Because I think all the years you know, predicted mm -hmm. have their you know, respective reason. Mm -hmm. to, you know, to support you know mm -hmm. the, uh, the their reasoning their their calculation or conclusion mm -hmm. well 2027 is one mm -hmm. and some some say 2024 20, right. be next even, year even closer that's yeah. right and mm -hmm. even some have said that you know like 2022 mm -hmm. supposed to happen last year mm -hmm. okay if I may quote you know the Fan Chou, mm -hmm. you know one of the mm -hmm. very famous you know commentators so all the uh, this kind of uh, you know the number games, Mm -hmm. It's not a war game, <laughs> it's a number of games. Mm -hmm. The year, the timeline games, they all have a respective, you know, uh, argument. Uh, but still, the, uh, the, uh, uh, it's like, you know, the, that reminds me of uh, the old time TV, uh, TV program in the U.S. back in 1980s, that mm -hmm. the, the Wheel of Fortune, mm -hmm. Wheel of Fortune, you can circle around and uh, to, to take your pick. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, it, it doesn't. Uh, it hardly has any uh, meaningful, you know, uh, implications. So let's let's uh, because all the uh, 
the American personnel, American military, foreign military personnel, or some of the American uh, scholars and this mm -hmm. and that, they keep saying the kind of, you know, that for, for a publicity purpose. Mm -hmm. Well, we have to seriously look at the, how the chi PRC, you know, uh, behave international. Their I international, you know, uh, behavior, international uh, external action, mm -hmm. all have been done in a very low profile, even invisible manner. Okay, even by either by war or by you know peaceful means, mm -hmm. you, you can never predict it that mm -hmm. you know, certain day or certain year they will happen. Either you know the uh, you know the detente between the between the U.S. and uh, North Korea. Mm -hmm. Okay, the uh, also it, it, you know when people worry about there might be a war during mm -hmm. a Trump administration, mm -hmm. Trump era. That suddenly, suddenly you know uh, you know Kim Kim Jong Un, his train, silently walk in the driving to uh, into Beijing railway station that surprised the world mm -hmm. and recently the uh, the uh, Wang Yi the Chinese official the, you know they put out the peace peace talk you know the you know diplomatic you know relation reestablished between Iran and Saudi Arabia mm -hmm. that surprised the world mm -hmm. as well now the, uh, the so let's say that the most of the uh, the wars in the human history or battles it happens accidentally Okay. Like that kind of, you know, date mm -hmm. has been dated, has been mm -hmm. pre-known by the rest of the world, particularly for the PRC. They mm -hmm. do something very, very, in a very cunning, very tricky matter. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, some of the, uh, the foreigners keep saying this year and that year, mm -hmm. well, I had to, I had to uh, you know, use the profanity. Mm -hmm. I don't care. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, President, uh, Professor Wu, you know, uh, apart from the year 2027, Taiwan also conducted a Han Guang exercise over the five days non-stop 24 hours in mid-May. Uh, as the time we speak now, uh, we knew that uh, there are a uh, US troops got involved. Over, over 100 soldiers over there would come over here in Taiwan to observe, not only observe, maybe has a, has a stake in the uh, process of the Hong Kong exercise. And uh, there was a uh, Admiral Adam Samuel Jones Lackler, uh, he's the one who is leading the team. So what's, what, what's your evaluation of, of these updates? Uh, you, you think that this is kind of signify or send a signal that there's a even increased uh, cooperation between United States and Taiwan? When we look at this kind of capability and w uh, opportunity and willingness, mm -hmm. when China's ready, we need to put a big question, question mark. mark. But mm -hmm. however, we need to know mm -hmm. that the, the Western society, even Taiwan right now, mm -hmm. we want to make ourselves ready because mm -hmm. we don't want they to attack without any prepares, mm -hmm. preparations. So we want ourselves, we have strong capability mm -hmm. and also willingness. And these two will interact with each other. Mm -hmm. When you have strong capability, you will strengthen your willingness. Mm -hmm. So this is what we Taiwan need right now. Mm -hmm. We need a strong capability, not only internal, which means we need our young people willing to fight. Right. We also need external help, assistance mm -hmm. from the United States. When we have this capability, we can strong strengthen our willingness. Mm -hmm. However, we need a long time education as long as those kind mm -hmm. of help from the military, joint military exercise, Hong Kong military mm -hmm. uh, exercise. This is what we need. Okay, all right, uh, pre uh, President Light, uh, would you say something about this update about this uh, in the United States kind of, uh, especially led by the uh, Admiral, uh, the General, kind of helping us out? I, c I think that uh, this Hong Kong exercise, mm -hmm. uh, right now what is happening is basic, basically computer uh, uh, simulations. Mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> Or an, a little bit like a tabletop, but a little bit uh, not exactly the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, and the interesting thing, in addition to the uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, it's led by a uh, 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 a general uh, mm -hmm. rather than a lieutenant general mm -hmm. or the some uh, some flag officer, a little bit uh, lower rank. Mm -hmm. uh, it's also the in our sense that uh, we utilize the. Um, uh, joint, uh, I think, a uh, joint tactical uh, simulation mm -hmm. uh, the, the systems, mm -hmm. <coughs> JTLS. JTLS, uh, yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. a level, uh, joint tactical, uh, joint tactical, the the level uh, mm -hmm. systems, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, in a that's a little bit different from uh, usually our military in terms of the tactical unit uh, mm -hmm. they use the J, uh, JCTAS. Mm -hmm. That's a joint conflict. Uh, and uh, tactical, uh, joint conflict and tactical uh, the simulations. Mm -hmm. That means that uh, uh, in the old uh, JCTAS uh, the, uh, itself, uh, we, uh, we can only do things under the brigade level. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. So the uh, JTLS, uh, they could uh, do things uh, in the much bigger scale mm -hmm. and also involve in other countries mm -hmm. and other players. And uh, the JTLS is also mm -hmm. being employed by uh, at least 23 uh, nations mm -hmm. in which the United States mm -hmm. have the deeper uh, defense relationship with. Mm -hmm. So basically, uh, there's a potential that uh, should the simulation uh, conduct in Taiwan, mm -hmm. uh, we, they could also open up other uh, similar uh, system in other countries. Uh, so that's why a lot of the speculation will come out. Mm -hmm. That uh, does that mean that uh, did the U.S. have a, a, a um, uh, a detached uh, contingent here, but also they are, uh, could open with other uh, countries uh, using the same system uh, for the response as well. Mm -hmm. Of course, we about this we do not know, but it's just a conjecture. Mm -hmm. But basically, I think that uh, by having uh, conducted the exercises, uh, the uh, simulation through a commonly used mm -hmm. uh, system that also be employed by the other nations, mm -hmm. uh, it opened a, a wider p um, possibility for the um, uh, talking and uh, examining the same parameter uh, for all the country mm -hmm. uh, in this region at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, and that uh, also speak to the issue about joiners as mm -hmm. well as a multinationals mm -hmm. uh, possible role uh, here. Mm -hmm. But of course, all we say here, uh, since we only have very limited information, uh, all, all those are basically just um, speculations, mm -hmm. uh, not uh, really a uh, 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 on-ground knowledge. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Ambassador Zhao. Yep. So <coughs> a very notable aspect of this year's Han Guang exercise, as which is mentioned, is the presence of the U.S. military personnel who not only observe the proceedings, but also have been slated to participate in the process, uh, you know, on, a, on the top of this computerized uh, kind of exercise that we did not really witness in the past. So what, what's your evaluation or your take on this? Well, I'm hardly a military expert talking mm -hmm. about this, but from mm -hmm. the uh, uh, from a political uh, perspectives, I don't know what caused this happen. Mm -hmm. Okay, in the first place, mm -hmm. <coughs> this um, mi uh, American military, you know, personnel uh, mm -hmm. not only observing but also you know participating in the, this uh, military exercise mm -hmm. uh, with Taiwan involved. That the uh, it's by the invitation of the uh, our administration, our mm -hmm. government. Mm -hmm. Or if, if or his by the any certain way of uh, pressure mm -hmm. from the USI, mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I, I uh, uh, still the uh, this kind of you know uh, the, uh, the the joining a cooperation military in a military form was not uh, used to be hap used to be uh, happening in early years mm -hmm. when we uh, US and Taiwan we have a uh, you know mutual defense treaty when we had diplomatic ties mm -hmm. that happened you know but on regular basis. It's very normal thing, but after the diplomatic, you know, uh, you know, break up, it was it was not allowed to happen, not legally allowed. Mm. But uh, the spirit and letter of spirit of the Taiwan Relations Act, it's kind of a taboo. What I was watching back in 1980s and 1990s, uh, you know, it it's a, it's a hardly it's a it's not it's not conceivable. Mm. But now it's become a reality. Well, I I of course I would like to see some of the bright side. Mm. of this uh, kind of a uh, cooperation. Mm. Uh, but in the military, it's always very, uh, you know, it's not for, for public domain to know, know that. So we have to be careful. Mm. We have to be careful. I always believe that, you know, although the relations between the U.S. and Taiwan is very close, but still there sh the sh should remain a certain fine line, mm. fine line. Because we, of course, that goes without saying that we, we like to, uh, you know, beef up. We like to, uh, you know, close, you know, the, you know, the um, boost the relationship with the uh, with United States. But let's not forget about the other side of the Taiwan Strait, how they react. So we kind of uh, get stuck between the, you know, the, 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 uh, the US and, and, and China. So we have to uh, carefully and uh, wisely calculate the, the, you know, the, uh, the gain and, the, the, and loss. You yeah. want to jump in? Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, it's not about re re reputation about a certain thing, but uh, since the, uh, uh, you mentioned about the U.S. is uh, participating. Mm -hmm. So I think the participation itself uh, means uh, quite a different things. Mm -hmm. In the past, when U.S. came to the Hanguang, whether that is <coughs> Uh, for the tabletop or the uh, uh, CPX or even the uh, uh, the live drill, um, uh, U.S. basically they are acting as observer. Mm -hmm. They are watching uh, from the sideline, mm -hmm. and then they give suggestion about what Taiwan should do, mm -hmm. about to how to how we can do to defend ourselves. Mm -hmm. But when the United States is participating in the in, in those uh, tabletop exercise, 
or the computer uh, exercises, which means that uh, there's a role in those uh, simulations where the United States might mm -hmm. play. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, that depends on what role they are uh, being slided in. Uh, sometimes the U.S. will act it as the China. Mm. Uh, sometimes the United States will act at just as the United States. Mm. So the, through the U.S. participation, and uh, in this sense, that means very possibly uh, the uh, uh, in those scenario that uh, it's no longer U.S. watching from the sideline. Then uh, there's a very strong indication that U.S. will get involved. But do you think? Those. But, do, mm. but do you think the participation itself could be seen as productive? attitudes towards China, as, as the ambassador just mentioned. I think the, uh, right now people are talking about the mm -hmm. capability and how we're going to deal with these situations, mm -hmm. rather than the political signal how China will feel about, because right now the threat is very real. Mm -hmm. And they need to do something. Uh, the uh, Taiwan, U U.S., need not, not only do we need to talk about how Taiwan should prepare for to defend itself, but also we need to know from the United States mm -hmm. what you are going to do mm -hmm. uh, in this situation. Okay, all right. Although the results of the simulation show that Taiwan is defensible if the U.S. and its allies come to Taiwan's aid, this isn't formally guaranteed, even though President Biden has verbally promised that the United States will come to Taiwan's aid if invaded. The statements were walked back by the State Department and White House officials. Let's explore how U.S. actions on Taiwan hint uh, its real stance. Uh, so President Lai, again, uh, it's a question for you. Since 2016, arms sales have been uh, increased and U.S.-Taiwan ties advanced in an unprecedented manner. What's behind this and the increases in arms sales to Taiwan since 2016? Your comments on this? I believe that mm -hmm. uh, first we need to look at the, uh, the arms sales to uh, Taiwan and also the items. There's a mm -hmm. big gap of not doing anything. Mm -hmm. uh, from the year 2008 to year 2016, especially mm -hmm. from year 2012 to year 2016, almost four years, mm -hmm. uh, not much of the things that re that's really going on. Mm -hmm. And uh, many of the items that re uh, Taiwan requested it uh, since year 2006, for example, mm -hmm. uh, and it hasn't really delivered uh, through the process, at least uh, during those eight years of hiatus. Mm -hmm. And later on, uh, people started to uh, rush uh, those items. So mm -hmm. I will say that the, fir uh, the first few years, since year 2016, basically it is trying to uh, make up the gap okay. about what previously that hasn't really uh, been progressing in terms of on sale. Mm -hmm. Because previously, especially under Obama administration, also jointly with the Mine administration, mm -hmm. that sometimes they look at the arms sale as uh, the, the thing politically would uh, anger China. Mm -hmm. And so that, uh, that with that politicization of the arms sale, the, uh, the our military uh, modernization and our defense modernization mm -hmm. actually uh, uh, came to a halt. Mm -hmm. But, but that I think the uh, arms sale to Taiwan, especially since year 2021, when the Biden came, I'm sure he came in, uh, there's a really different uh, issue about what exactly the kind of item that the U uh, United States is willing to sell to Taiwan. So the issue about the asymmetrical defense means uh, that becomes the new criteria. Mm -hmm. Because they believe that the first Taiwan need to defend itself before we are launching for or uh, asking for uh, those platforms. Mm -hmm. So that in fr since year 2021, all kinds of new requirements mm -hmm. about what exactly that Taiwan should do, what exactly that uh, the kind of weaponry and the, the kind of battle you should mm -hmm. fight, mm -hmm. uh, that dictate. Uh, the, the weaponry system that the U.S. is willing to sell. Mm -hmm. So that there's a, a, a big difference in, and after year 2021 and before year 2021. Mm -hmm. So that, that was the, uh, uh, the cases. And now uh, the uh, uh, arms sale also uh, is steering toward not just about the uh, symmetrical defense, just like uh, what Ukraine cases, mm -hmm. but also started to uh, sell the system mm -hmm. rather than the, uh, uh, the weaponry. Okay. So that is the uh, system basically is more of a um, uh, defense amplifier. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, the, there's a deeper in, uh, implication about integration mm -hmm. between Taiwan, not only with the United States, but probably with other U.S. ally mm -hmm. and fr uh, friendly nation mm -hmm. in this region, mm -hmm. even with NATO. Mm -hmm. So those are the completely different <coughs> way of the uh, arms sale in different stages to Taiwan okay. that we observe. All right, um, Ambassador Zhao, you mentioned that uh, you know Taiwan should be cautious about this kind of military preparation. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, c this question kind of kind of uh, echo you know, what I just mentioned. The Biden administration has used the argument that arms sale to Taiwan should be limited to only helping Taiwan boost a symmetric uh, warfare cap uh, capability. So how, how is this different from you know, when Trump was in the office, uh, you know, the strategy between the two different <coughs> administrations? 
Well, the arm cell type, mm -hmm. the R type of arm cells or the nature of arm cells mm -hmm. has been, you know, the uh, indicated very clearly in the Taiwan Relations Act that mm -hmm. the, uh, in early years, they said the American arm cells to Taiwan should be uh, kind of uh, of the defensive nature, mm -hmm. defensive nature. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's a matter of interpretation. How would you define certain item? Is it defensive or, you know, mm -hmm. or offensive? Mm -hmm. So now it's uh, the always, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's a debatable, okay, issue mm -hmm. about the, uh, this what kind of uh, arm cells. Professor Wu. Uh, Taiwan increased to uh, Taiwan intends to buy 66 F-16V fighter jets from the United States with the initial delivery set for 2023. However, the timeline has been pushed back by two years. Other weaponry such as the Abrams uh, main battle tank and the MQ 9V drones uh, may also be delayed. So, could arms delay be linked to the potential strategic reorientation of the U.S. approach in the Taiwan Strait? Yeah, the arms trade uh, or arms transferring issues are mm -hmm. very popular between Taiwan and the United States. Mm -hmm. And under the TRA, arms uh, trade is a very important commitment from the United States to Taiwan. Mm -hmm. They show this consistent security commitment to Taiwan. Mm -hmm. However, there's a school scholar that argued that selling weapons to Taiwan rather than sending troops mm -hmm. is better for the United States because mm -hmm. they, can, they can reduce the casualties if this war occurred. Mm -hmm. However, this kind of school scholars become minority because Biden administration tried to sell in weapons to Taiwan mm -hmm. and also you know, probably will send troops here. We don't know. Mm -hmm. But the one thing is what kind of weapon we want to buy. Mm -hmm. Uh, during like the Trump administration, mm -hmm. we purchased like you know the the F-16 uh, the fighter jet and also the M1A2 tank. Mm -hmm. It total uh, uh, total add up about two point something more than two point two billion US dollars, which mm -hmm. give us a sharp increase okay. for the military spendings. Mm -hmm. And some people start to criticize why we need this big chunk of tank, which is not suitable for our West Coast, which where we have very special mm -hmm. geog uh, geographical. Mm -hmm. On the West Coast, we have fishing farm with hills, and our big jungle tank, we will get swamped mm -hmm. by this kind of terrain. Mm -hmm. It becomes a sitting duck. Right. Big toys destroyed by PLA, just boom. Mm -hmm. So this is why we need to change our strategic thinking. Mm -hmm. What kind of weapons now we need to buy? Well, how wisely we can spend our money on buying the weapons from the United States, if the United States want to sell us. Like what I say, we still need commitment mm -hmm. and also with a con some consensus within mm -hmm. our islands. If we don't have consensus within the islands, I don't think the United States will try to help us any mm -hmm. this kind of weapons, mm -hmm. right? So we start need to kind of plan our military preparations, the weapons purchasing, and also how to strengthen our people's uh, willingness to fight. And that concludes today's episode where we explored the implication of the three war games on Taiwan security. Our distinguished guest speakers share valuable perspectives on the necessary preparations Taiwan must make if U.S. military doesn't intervene in time during a contingency. We invite you to leave your comments on our YouTube channel. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Until next time, take care.